Hello YouTubes, welcome back to the channel. Um, today we're going to get back rolling on the insulating the pole barn. It's actually been a couple of weeks since I've been out here. And actually I think it's been about three or four weeks since I've actually done a video out here. And I'm really not, like usual, I'm not as far along as I would like to be. Um, I did spend a lot of time cleaning up a bunch of stuff and getting it out of here out of the way because like I said in my last video and I was spending too much time moving stuff around and I still am even with all the stuff out of here I, I knocked down this workbench that used to be over here um, the parts of it are up underneath this box of it I'm gonna rebuild it smaller eventually so I think I'm just going to concentrate on getting this half of the shop done this winter, get my new workbench built, and then the rest, the, the last half of the shop can be either when I have free time or next winter probably, realistically, is when I'll get to it. Um, I still have to start this section and this section. This section won't take me that long. This section, because I got this weird window tied up to the pole here need to come up with some fancy engineering to figure this out. I think what I'm currently thinking about, because I have no way of getting a jack stud in here to support the header. And this is a 48 inch window. I'm putting my rafters 24 inch in center, so I'm going to have at least two ceiling joists that are going to land in here. And I, th So the first one I already figured out is going to be about here. And the other one, well, 24 inches down, so it'll be right in here. So, I'm going to frame this in kind of a peculiar way here. But I really don't know how else to do it. I'm going to frame the bottom part here normal. But I'm going to stop my studs right here at this level. Then I'm just going to run a header all the way across this opening. Because I figure, then I'm gonna, on top of the header, I'll stud it back up to get to where I need to be. And I figure that should be good enough to get me the support I need. Because I'm also dealing with this brace that comes down. And I think I'm, in a previous video, I might have talked about this. I, I really didn't don't know if I can take these out or not. The couple of guys I've had in here looking at this, they said that needs to stay there because it's the it's the support for the building that stops it from racking. But what I don't understand, if I'm putting a ceiling in here, wouldn't the rafter joist stop the building from racking? But I guess instead of worrying about it, I'm just going to leave them. And I'm just going to frame them around them because as I said in my... I'm pretty sure in a previous video I said I'm going to put like either cabinets or something up high or a shelf up there. So they'll eventually be hidden anyways. So, I don't know. It might seem weird the way I'm doing it, but I really don't know how else to do it. I know it's, I've had guys tell me to put um, joist hanger here. But then I'm going to have to do something weird and wrap the joist hanger flange around. And uh, I don't know. I, I don't know if that's necessarily the best way of going about it either. To tell you the truth, I think after the ceiling is all, all cross braced together, I don't think it really should be an issue. I don't think that one particular ceiling joist is going to be holding enough load where it's going to matter. Then I got to do it again down there in that wall. And the only other window is this window, but they did it right. They put, actually put the window in the middle of the of the opening between the beams, so I can actually frame that right and be okay there. Believe it or not, I actually put that on <laughs> one ceiling joist and all by myself. It was, I'm not going to lie, it was kind of a sketchy deal. I'm kind of surprised I didn't drop it on myself, but um, I should call someone... Come help me with the rest of these, but you know, I just have a handful of them. I'm gonna keep on doing it myself as long as I don't hurt myself, I guess. 
but you gotta do what you gotta do. Um, I am using 2x8s, and that is about the minimum I can go for the spandum going with. Um, I did check with the lumber company, I talked to their engineer and they said, yeah, that should be fine for what I'm doing. He, they just recommended doing a lot of cross bracing to make sure it was all tied together good. And and the couple of carpenters I talked to, they kind of recommended the same thing. So, In fact, the one guy showed me a neat way of putting a cross support across the top of them that's really going to lock them down good. So. I just need to get rolling on that. Um, and hopefully by the end of the week in here, I'd like to have basically this all all studded out and then during the week I can start running the electrical and once that's done we can insulate it and and um, cover it all up. Yeah, and I guess that'll be it there. I mean we're out I wanted this video to be a couple minutes long and we're already close to 10 minutes, the 10 minute mark here. So, so yeah, you guys have a nice day.